are in the middle of a tropical rainforest in Queensland. It is teeming with activity. Uh, it's just so beautiful. And uh, there's life everywhere. In fact, a snake just crawled out in front of Mark, a quite a deadly snake just crawled out in front of Mark and slid it away a few minutes ago. But still, it's a beautiful place and it boggles the mind and fills the senses with the wonder, you know, of God's creation. And you know, the mind is one of the most marvelous creations that God has given us. You know, experts tell us that we only use uh, about 10%, if that, of the power of our brain, the power of our minds and brain. And uh, it's, it's a wonderful faculty. But we need to ask the question, what part does it play in our walk with God? Are we supposed to deny our mind and just move in spirit? Or does the mind have a place? Are we to subdue it or let it come through? Well, it's a wonderful faculty that God has given us. And we're going to have a look at this in its place. That it, the part that it plays in its place in walking with God and learning to move in the Spirit and learning to walk with the Lord like Enoch walked. And uh, this session is going to cover and some other more aspects than in our first session of walking in the Spirit. This is going to cover some deeper aspects of the mind and how it functions. And, and, and how we can learn to bring the mind into subjection to the Holy Spirit and the Spirit of God within us and then the two become one powerful, powerful element in which God uses and, and well, just uses through us. We can't just subjugate it. It has, has to be submitted to the Lord. You see, the mind boggles when you look at all of this creation. And we, God has given us a mind, and it is good, but it needs to be renewed. It needs to be come into alignment and oneness with God. And then, and only then, can we really truly flow in God. You know, the Apostle Paul wrote in Romans chapter 12 and verse 2, he talks about being, be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. He's talking about presenting ourselves to God and uh, then being transformed so that we might know the good and the perfect will of God. And uh, it's important, the word transformed there is a very important Greek word, it's metamorphosis. And it means a total transformation. In other words, the Bible says, if, if, if our mind is transformed, if something happens to our mind, a total transformation is going to take place within us. And once that happens, then a, a union takes place, a unity begins to take place within us because our mind becomes one with God. And, you know, it's doubtful if our brain can originate thought. A human spirit can, and, but it's, it, it's doubtful if our brain can originate original thought. It can sort, it can sift information given to it like a computer can. It can come, con come to certain conclusions depending upon what data has been fed into it and depending on what we believe to be true or not. The mind logs that in into a compartment, you believe that to be true. So its calculations will be on what you believe. That's why Paul said the mind has to be renewed. And then, and only then, can transformation take part. Now, you know, the mind is an incredibly powerful thing. And if we're going to walk with God, we're going to really have to, we're going to have to deal with it in some way. That renewal has to take place. And it's all about unity. If we can come into unity, when our heart, our part of, part of our spirit, which we call the heart, and the mind agree, anything is possible. The heart, 
Your spirit is the God part of you within you. It's where the Holy Spirit resides within you. Your mind is, a, your brain is the physical part of you. Now, when the heart and the mind, or the heart and the brain, come into union, whatever happens at that point, or whatever is spoken at that point, it great, what can I say, creative power is released. We are made in the image and the likeness of God. And we are creators. And um, the New Age movement has got a hold of this in a very real way. But without God, you see, we are still creative whether we know God or not. Because our spirit is creative. And if it's un in union with the demonic spirit, it's still creative. So as we learn to come into harmony and union with God, and our heart and our mind agree, anything is possible. Transformation takes place within us. And what we speak will come to pass. That's why Jesus said, whatsoever you ask in my name, I will give it to you. And we've often thought, well, how can that be? I've asked for lots of things and I haven't had it. It didn't happen. It didn't come. That's because your spirit, the God part of you, and your mind were not in harmony. When, when God's purpose is what God wants, what God wants us to ask for today is in harmony with this, our mind. And the heart and the mind agree, you shall have what you ask for. You know, Jesus said, you shall love the Lord thy God with all your heart and your neighbor as yourself. This is the first and greatest commandment, the law of love. And it's important to understand this because in order to be unified, there's two things have to happen. One, our, our mind needs to be renewed. And secondly, our love for God and our neighbors has to be purified. We have to become love, like in that way, because God is love, and to come into harmony with Him, these things really need to be in place. And so, as we said, when the heart and the mind agree, a bridge opens up in the realm of the Spirit into the realm of God's kingdom. Now you say, that sounds too simple. It's not. It's quite profound, really because we're talking about unity or union with the Lord. And when the two, when the, the mind has become renewed and your heart, that's your spirit part of you, where God dwells, where you're one with the Holy Spirit, your spirit and your mind come into unity. When they agree, a bridge opens up. It's like I can't get across this stream because there's no bridge. I have to go around and climb across rocks. But when these two agree in the spirit, a bridge opens up which gives you access visually, sensually in that area of our hearing, taste, sight. A bridge opens into the realm of God's spirit, the kingdom of God. Friends, this is the way in. And you can learn. You can learn. It is a process. It doesn't happen overnight. But it is a process which happens when these two come into union. We're going to look at this in the next session. Talk to me. Talk to me. I'm waiting in the morning. I wait throughout the day How sweet it is for me to hear All the things you have to say When the heart and mind are unified, a door opens up to us in the realm of the Spirit. And we need to look at this. When we speak about the heart, we're speaking about uh, the spirit. I mean, your, to see your spirit and, and, and the, the desires, your desires and your spirit. Um, the heart is hard to define, but in this context, we're talking about our spirit. When your spirit, a part of you, the heart and your mind is unified, a uh, doorway opens up for us. You know, your physical brain and uh, your spirit must agree. Otherwise, confusion results, you see, and the, there is a veil that remains between us 
as long as these two are not unified. Now, in Matthew chapter 6 and verse 21, it says, For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. And he goes on to say that the light of the body is the eye. If therefore your eye be single, your whole body shall be full of light. But if your eye be evil, then your whole body shall be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is, that is in you be darkness, how great is that darkness? You know, it's an incredible statement, this, and it really needs to be understood. The eye, eye here speaks of our focus, our focus. Um, you know, where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Where your focus is, where your desires in life and your focus are, uh, that's your heart will follow. And uh, what you, where is your treasure, you see? What is the thing that is uppermost on your mind? What is the thing that drives you? Where are your hopes and your desires and your dreams? The light of the the light of the body, this word light is a Greek word which means the same word that's used for the light of God. If your eye be single, that means focused. That word your whole being will be full of light. And this word here is, is a different word. It means your whole life will become like a lamp giving out light. The eye or your focus determines how much light you have. It's a very, very important kingdom principle. Very important. It's a secret of the kingdom that we need to understand. Where your focus is, it's going to determine how much light you have. You know, and you can come to the point where your whole being becomes a lamp and starts to emanate a, a perpetual source of light. In other words, what we're saying here is that your mind has to, be op has to open the way for you to be filled with light. So the mind is the block for incoming light. You see, when you pray and you worship, especially when you pray in other tongues, your spirit becomes energized. The Bible talks about that. And it becomes filled with light. It gathers light. It gathers something out of God. And that's why the Bible tells us in Ephesians 5 and verse 18 through 19, it says, Be not drunk with wine wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit, filled with light. How? By speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs and singing, making melody in your heart unto the Lord, worshipping, praying in the Spirit. You see, it's in your, your inner man, your spirit becomes recharged, becomes energized with light. Now, the problem is not so much doing that because we understand that most of us, that as we pray and seek God and pray in the Spirit, Something happens within us. We're generating light. But how to let that light cross over to fill your body and start to change your body is another issue. So the Apostle Paul said this in Romans 12 to Be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you might prove what is the good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. There are three levels there. In the last session, we talked about three levels, moving through those levels. And so, transform by the renewing of your mind. Be not conformed to this world, but be transformed. Metamorpho is, is the Greek word for transformed there. And it's where we get the word, English word morphine from. That total transformation, you see. And uh, change, transfigured, to be transformed. Um, and that word that your mind has to be renewed, the Greek word is to, is, is, which means renovate. You know, if you have a house and you want to renovate it, and uh, if it's like full of spiders and run down, it has to be cleaned out. And then, then it has to be renovated. You reline the walls, put new windows in. That's the same with our minds. You know, from a very early age, our minds have been filled with junk. Oh, particularly in this last generation, say the last 20, 20 years or so, that uh, and, and uh, television, most young people spend an enormous amount of time watching television. And uh, violent images, sexual images, wrong concepts, lies, 
philosophies which are not truth, but and we have all of this filled with lies by God, what he is like, filled with limitations and what we have been told we cannot do. Even what preachers have told us that we cannot do in God. You see, the whole Christian denominations have filled their people with limitations based on error. You see, I was taught you could never see the Lord. That was just, you know, that was not a possibility at all. And uh, I was just taught that. It was a limitation. It was an error, but it was a limitation, which I believed and became a barrier, a veil, which blocked me out from being able to do that. You know, and whole Christian denominations have filled their peoples with limitations. I could talk, you could never hear God talking to you every day. I was taught that visions were for a special kind of people who were specially called of God. Well, that's all nonsense. That's not true. That's not what the Bible teaches, but I believed it. And because I believed it, it put a barrier in there. There was a veil that closed me off to that realm. Strongholds were built into my mind that had to be torn down by truth and revelation. My mind slowly became clogged up through years and years of input into my mind, which wasn't true, all logged into the memory banks of my mind. If, you ought, if you're going to undergo a metamorphosis, your mind has to be renewed. Now, talking about the drastic changes from, say, a caterpillar and morphing into a butterfly, that's the kind of change we're talking about. That's the kind of enormous change that we're talking about here. And that's what Paul is referring to. That, you know, one is earthbound and is not free to enter the realm of the spirit. But when our minds are renewed and cleaned out, all darkness is out. Our memory banks that are full of evil and darkness have been erased. A union of spirit and mind begins to take place. And the veil of unbelief begins to melt. Now, we become one new man, not three men, spirit, soul, and body. We become one new man, fully integrated. That's how Jesus was when he walked on this earth. You see, when once our spirit and our mind become united as one, the body quickly follows because there's no hindrance of God's light to flow through us into our physical body. But when they're not united, once the mind and your spirit is united, the body follows very quickly. Light begins to flood the whole being. We see a picture of this as Jesus, when he was transfigured on the Mount of Transfiguration, came through even to his clothing. You see, and that's how God intended this to be, a unification of body, soul, and spirit. And uh, many in these last days, you see, are going to be transfigured, are going to come to a point of union, unification of spirit, soul, and body with the Lord, so that they're one new man, one new creation, filled with light. When we become to what, this point, we reach the point that Enoch reached, when he had pure access to both realms. He walked in both realms as Jesus walked in both realms. Many in these last days are going to reach this point. Now, the question is, how do we get our minds cleaned out? How do we get our minds uh, to be renovated? You see, it's one thing to talk about, you know, we need our minds renovated. It's one thing to talk about this. It's another thing to know how we can do this. Now, we need to really just understand this process. You see, our spirit, when we're born again and baptized in the Holy Spirit, our spirit, it becomes light. This light enters our spirit. It's the dwelling place. That's where the Holy Spirit dwells. It is the house, the house of the Lord. Know ye not that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. So right within our spirit, and we have, like, if you like, we are a trinity. We are body, soul, and spirit. Our body is the outer court. You know, open to the elements, the sun, the moon, the stars, the wind, the el all the elements, just like the outer court in the, in the tabernacle of Moses he built in the wilderness. Then there's a holy place. 
you know, and the, and, and the holy place was a covered place. You can't see that from the outside. It was covered. And uh, in the holy place was the candlestick and the, the table of showbread. And, and it was the holy place. And we have a soul, you see, which is a holy place. And, uh, and most Christians dwell just there. They dwell in this place where the soul, the mind, emotions, and the will, that's where they live their Christian lives. Very few Christians understand the promptings that come from the spirit deep within them. They don't know how to walk from their spirit. They know how to walk from the holy place. They know how to, to, to dwell there. They know how to walk with their mind and their mind and their natural perceptions of things and the, their emotions control them to a great degree and their own will, their, their will, this is all in the holy place, this is all in the soul of man and, and their will is not necessarily surrendered to God so they walk from a soul and the Bible talks about soulish Christians they're still Christians, if they die they go to heaven but they're still soulish Christians you see, and so their, their mind and their emotions and their will are really not in harmony with God. Although they are still, they are still Christians. And then there's another place, and that is the, the holiest of all. And in there was just the presence of God. There was the Ark of the Covenant, the mercy seat, and the manifest presence of God where they... God spoke to Moses from in, the, in that place. God spoke from between the cherubims over the Ark of the Covenant. And that's where God was heard. That's where his voice was perceived. And that's where very few Christians walk. And this has to change, you see. Our mind is a problem because it locks us out of that realm. The natural mind is an enemy of God. And so... We have to begin to learn how our mind can be renewed. It is essential that our mind is renewed. The great vast majority of Christians live their lives on this earth, die and go to heaven, and their mind has never been renewed. That has a great effect upon them, you see. They walk with these limitations upon their lives. But in these last days, there's coming forth a people we hear a lot these days about uni union or unity. But, you know, union is a union of spirit, soul, and body walking as one before the Lord. And it's not denying our body. It's not denying our soul. It's the unifying them as one being, one person uh, in God. How are we going to do that? And the importance of doing that is so essential. We are the temple of the Lord. We have to become integrated before God. And once our mind and our heart, our spirit, begin to agree, transformation begins to take place. We start to be filled with light. And that light flows into our physical bodies, eradicating the darkness in our physical bodies eradicating the hereditary problems in our physical bodies. But you see, it's important to understand one thing, that to get from the holy place, that's from the soulish realm, that to walk in the realm of the spirit, which is the holiest of all, there was a barrier called the altar of incense. It was at the end of the holy place, and you could not pass through the veil into that holiest of all, without passing the altar of incense. And incense speaks of prayer, it speaks of seeking God, it speaks of waiting upon God. And, and we have to build this altar of incense in our lives if we're going to cross over the veil into the next realm. If we're going to get through and start to live from that holy place, the secret place of the Most High, we have to pass the altar of incense. And the high priest would take the incense from off that altar and it would be there and it would, he would wave it before the Lord. And it was only with that he could gain access through the veil into the manifest presence of God. Only as the, 
he would take that for the, the door to open into that realm. There was no other way. And if he tried to get into that realm without incense, he would have, he would have died. Can't get in there. And that incense, that, that seeking God, that searching for God with all your heart, is that incense. And you see how a whole life becomes a censer. A censer was a little instrument that he had, and in it were, were coals from off the altar. And he would pour incense on that, and the place would fill with smoke. And that speaks of our prayer life. It speaks of us as we wait on God. We are the censer. And he touches that censer with his fire from our spirits, and it fills the place with incense. And as that place fills with smoke, you see, the Lord cannot see our faults anymore. He sees who we are in him. And it's only as we come before the Lord and begin to seek God with our whole heart and search for him, knock, ask, seek, wait upon the Lord with the one focus, with one eye that is single, and a single heart and single mind towards the Lord, and our eye is focused to one, one thing, getting through this, only then, with this focus, with this determination of seeking God with our whole heart, just as Enoch started to walk with God when he saw the flood was coming, we need to take that, that picture and come before the Lord and say, God, we need to walk with you. We've got to find a way into this realm. We've got to find a way into a better walk with you. We've got to walk from the holiest of all. We've got to dwell in the secret place of the Most High. And you seek God, you ask, you knock, you seek. And that incense fills the place. And the veil slowly rends until you come through. And you begin to walk into that realm of God. The high priest only could walk in there once a year. But we can access and live in that realm, that secret place of the Most High. The responsibility is ours. Enoch saw what was coming. We need to see what is coming. And it needs to be a motivation for you and I to seek the Lord with our whole heart an eye that is single until we become filled with light until our mind starts to be transformed the heart and the mind agree then the door opens up